everybody, and welcome to the Dream Team Sonic Podcast, episode number 61. Uh, I'm Tony, and with me this week is Ben. Are you there, Ben? I'm here, mate. You all right? All right, mate. James, are you there? I'm here, Tony. And a week late, but better <laughs> late than never ever, are you? You're here tonight, aren't you, mate? I am, yeah. Apologies for last week. Uh, Mr. McNulty let me down. I was supposed to be playing <laughs> table tennis, pool, and eating food with, with him and his wife. And uh, um, and he came down with COVID kind of last minute. So that was a bit of a nightmare. But here now and uh, excited for the new month. Excellent. It's good to have you here, mate. Um, and we'll just give a, we'll start off by giving a, a big thanks to our new Patreons, uh, Matt Woolcock, who I've just seen earlier. He's sat number one. Number one, Matt Wilcox. So well done, mate. Um, it's great to have you aboard. Uh, Lee Utin, Dan Cox, our resident Connor, has put himself in for the uh, Patreon Cup. Uh, Wayne Foster Crouch, Dean Horton, and Robert Williams. Um, great to have you all aboard, and uh, hopefully uh, you uh, you get some help. And you get uh, you do well. Obviously, Matt, obviously flying, uh, but yeah, right, Fergie. Um, a week late, but it's going to be good to see what you did with your team, with your new transfers, and how you've done this week. So over to you, mate. Well, yeah, it's not that good to be honest, because uh, <laughs> did score um, fifty-two points, which which is okay, but I was pretty forced into cashing in one of my cash cows, right. and the one I the one I chose sadly was was Trent Alexander Arnold. Um, it was either him. Uh, or Salah or Kane really, and Salah and Kane weren't going anywhere. So I don't, I don't know if uh, we mentioned it last month, but I was forced into a corner by having to have Jordan Henderson. Um, he did actually get, he did actually get assists in consecutive weeks, which was good. But I, I think I outstayed my welcome with him um, um, a little bit. So I had to have a bit of a reshuffle to get rid of him. I had um, Jota as well, who you know he's, he's obviously going to. Sh- Shame minutes now, I think, with, you know, Diaz, Firmino, Salah, and Mane. So I wanted to get rid of him as well. So I had a reshuffle and I took out uh, Henderson, Jota, and uh, Trent uh, for Rudiger, Thiago Silva, and Sterling. As ever, this Sterling Mares kind of tossed the coin thing, landed yeah. in, in Mares's court earlier. But I am hoping that Sterling starts midweek against yeah. Sporting and, uh, and maybe gets a haul there. So 52 points. Um, Two transfers left. Bowen may be a problem, may not. I don't. I'm not sure. It 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 looks like he may be okay, but they. But I just think there's there's better options. Like like still. So, um, just to run through it quickly, I've got Edison, Robertson, Cancelo, Rudiger, Thiago Silva, Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne, Bowen, Sterling, Kane, and Salah. So 52 points, 5.2k. Um, okay, but I'm finding it difficult to to climb with this team. Uh, my best team. Is roughly three hundredth. Um, I was tempted to make a couple of transfers in that one, but I left it uh, just because you know it's got loads of Liverpool, loads of Man City, and obviously they played twice this week or they play twice this week. So um, yeah, that's me at the moment, and I've got a few a few decisions to kind of make. I think I think this is the time of year now. I think we start looking at start looking at mini leagues and kind of you know um, yeah. whether you want to attack or defend and. And you know, I think it's roughly the time of year now because you know we're coming. We've got well, we've got 15 transfers left now for the whole season, haven't we? Yeah. And it's getting starting to get to that point. So I've got some decisions to think about there. Yeah, happy days. I would say Bowen's a, a tricky one. I, on last pod, I was saying that I'm keeping, I'm keeping, and then because they've got a tricky run of fixtures, West Ham. But gee, I, they play well on the break, uh, as we've seen Do. numerous times this season, and. <laughs> Uh, Bowen and Antonio are dangerous, dangerous going forward. And then when he picks up that knock, I'm uh, watching him and thinking, just get up. Come on, get up. <laughs> I've sat there and said, keep you in. I said, oh, yeah, and to watch him go off and then say, I, he was struggling to walk, weren't he, at one point? He couldn't put any weight on Fucking hell. Jesus. Uh, but, yeah, a bit of good news today, obviously, that he's not suffered any significant damage. What comes out in the next couple of days will be important, obviously. Um, so it's he- interesting that though, because for just just purely from a fantasy view, and obviously I don't I don't wish anyone any any ill harm or injury. But sometimes if they just said, "Oh, he's going to be out for a month," it makes your decision for you, and and you know you're just like, "Right, I got to get rid." Whereas now we're still in the same boat of 
yeah. well, do we keep now or do we get rid? It's a bit, you know, it's a bit of a tough one. You half hope sometimes that you just get a bit of concrete news either way, don't you? That's it, but you know, he's, he's injured. So you, you know you've got to get rid. Exactly. Because now you, you're sitting home thinking, do I need to use that transfer? <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, over onto my team. Uh, I don't know what happened this weekend. 49 points for the weekend. Um, again, I'm struggling to climb with this team. It already had Rudiger and Silva in, um, which I prepped beforehand for the Chelsea block. Um, I, I played around with a few transfers. He had James in there at one point. I ended up, I wanted to upgrade Elliot um, because he doesn't seem to be getting the game time. I thought he might. I thought he, he had a, a couple of good cameos. I thought he might get a more ca- uh, game time, but he didn't. Um, so. My transfers this month for, uh, so far were Diaz out, obviously with the injury, four to six weeks been reported. So he was straight out for Chalaba, which uh, give you a bit of cash. Uh, Madison, another injury. Um, whether he's out long term, I'm not too sure. I think he might be back um, during the week. But uh, I thought of throwing Louis Diaz at Liverpool, who's looked really good so far. Really, really good. Yes. Best player up pitching last few games. How he's not got the ratings, I think we'll touch on that later on. But. Tsh- <laughs> Um, so that give me a bit of cash. And then Harvey Elliott, who were only 1.2 million. Now, how this guy ended up back in my team after it took me so long to get rid of him <laughs> was I watched an interview. Um, he got a goal midweek, didn't he, Antonio? And he promised me once he got a goal, he was going on a run. Um, <laughs> and, and I, do you know what? I, I, fancied, I fancied West Ham to at least get a goal. And, and you're thinking, he got Bowen Antonio. He's got some tough games going on, playing on the counter. I, I fancied him. And to be fair, West Ham should have scored. She should have had a couple. They yeah. definitely rode oak at times, Liverpool. Um, tough place to go Anfield, as we know. Antonio had a few decent efforts. Yeah, he's back in my team though now, and I think he's probably going to end up stuck there for a while in this side. But that's how it goes. So my team is Edison, Rudiger, Chalabar, Silva and Cancelo doing the business at the back. Um, eight, ten, three, and eight points there. De Bruyne can't take out De Bruyne whether he's on penalties or not. I think we discussed that last week. But twenty points for him. Bowen Diaz both zeros. Salah zero. Another quiet game for Salah. Although he should have scored first first couple of minutes of the game, he should have probably buried one. But uh, never. Harry Kane still to play. And Antonio zero. Um, best team is. I think he's had a decent week with best team. 268. Uh, it quick, I made a couple of transfers in that. Quick onto the Chelsea Chelsea block. And it's paid dividends. Uh, just playing with the quality of fixtures and the quantity of fixtures. Um, yeah, happy enough with the week. Obviously not in my pod team. And I, can't, I, can't, I can't seem to get it going, to be honest. But hey ho. Uh, on to you, Ben. Yeah. Um, 70 points this week. 1,893 points overall, um, sitting 461st now. Um, mm. Did a couple of transfers. Let's have a look. Did So I wanted to get some Chelsea in the back there for the, the nice run they've got. But I didn't really want to jump off Liverpool, but I had a feeling I ain't going to move up this leaderboard if I keep Liverpool because there's so much Liverpool there now. So I had to... Uh, Take out Van Dyke, and I put in Reese James. So that a lot got lucky. I got fifteen points off that. He's had a goal, star man, assist. Um, still got lovely fixtures, Chelsea. And with the money I got from Van Dyke, I could upgrade my goalkeeper again. So I've gone from Loris to Mendy. But Mendy only got five points, didn't get a rating. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, lovely, lovely moves they are. Yeah, worked out all right then. I could have done one more, but I suppose what's the point when Liverpool's got a double game week, uh, Man City's got a double game week, and I don't really want to take Cancelo out because he just gets star man out of nowhere, doesn't he? Yeah. Even when he's and he concedes and that. Um, Alexander Arnold, 15 points. Uh, Robertson, 8 points. Bernardo Silva, 5. De Bruyne, 20 points. Sterling on the bench, didn't play. But I only had what zero point one in the bank, and he should play against Sporting surely midweek. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm. I think he's got to. 
Yeah. Uh, Salah, zero. Jota, minus one off the bench. Got a yellow card. And uh, hopefully he'll play midweek. And Kane to play on Monday. So, yeah. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. You, you, you notoriously do well with your pod teams. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously flying. Decent, doing decent there, mate. Two good moves as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, like you say, Sterling probably still to play midweek. Kane could be a big score, that. Well done, mate. James, <clears throat> over to you, mate. Yeah, well, I made a couple of um, I had a couple of transfers left um, at the end of last month, so um, I took out Bowen and brought in Jota, and um, I did Robertson to Reese James, and um, I used one transfer so far this month to um, switch Edison to Mendy, so that I had like a a mini Chelsea block, if you like. Uh, yeah. So that so I've got Mendy, uh, Reese James, and Rudiger in there. Um, so yes, pretty good so far. 70 points this week, uh, five from Mendy, 15 from Trent, 15 from James, uh, eight from Rudiger, three from Cancelo in midfield, five from Bernardo Silva, 20 from De Bruyne, nothing from Diaz, um, up front minus one from Jota, nothing from Salah and Kane to play tomorrow. Oh, and uh, I've managed to halve my um, halve my rank this week it, it, with my best team. So I've gone mm-hmm. from um, well, j- not quite half, but I've gone from seventieth to uh, which I was this time last week, um, back up to thirty fourth um, with seventy eight points in that team. So back in the mix, although still some way off off um, Matt Woolley. At the top, <laughs> about 70, 80 points, but uh, um, but I'm still fighting. Um, although I didn't, I looked at the top 100 and there weren't many Chelsea blocks in there, yeah. so uh, I thought I might make a few sneaky moves to try and uh, try and get a march on the other guys in there. Yeah, don't blame you with the fixtures they've got. Yeah, um, I, I, f- I forgot to mention my best team, it's uh, 177th. And I've jumped on a couple of Chelsea in that. I think I've got three Chelsea in that team now. Mm, with Rudiger. Yeah, nice. I, I, I think the people at the top, obviously, with the Liverpool blocks that did so well last month, mm. I think you're going to, even though the, the fixtures toughen a little bit, and obviously Chelsea have the better fixtures, Liverpool are in such good form. And yeah. it's hard to, like you say, Fergie always says about the moves you don't make. They, they're going to be so scared. They're not going to jump probably from Liverpool to Chelsea. So it, it West Ham, I mean, that chance that was it, Lanzi, uh, four hours, was it? That Both chance, of them. I mean, Both of them had a good chance. I mean, that is it's a difference maker, that. Bowen, spreading that over the bar, if that Liverpool block loses its um, loses its clean sheet, I mean, it's advantage Chelsea then. People's, people's minds would be ticking then, thinking, am I going to have to jump across to James and Rudiger? It'd have been, it'd have been, <laughs> it'd have been some uh, nervy moments, but as as you were, Liverpool kept the clean sheet and they go on. I, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting for, for next month. I find they've done that a lot this season. Is I, I found Allison's you know obviously a, a wonderful keeper, but I think he's kept them in quite a lot of games. I don't mean kept them in the match per se, but yeah. Yeah. kept clean sheets through brilliant, brilliant, and that's why Allison gets lots of of seven ratings as well, and why he's yeah. such a good keeper in this game because he only needs to make the one. Incredible save every game, but he seems to do it. And it's it was it was the same towards the end of last year as well. It's 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 crazy how it's crazy how it happens. He even popped up with a goal last year, didn't he? <laughs> oh, that was that was unbelievable. <laughs> you know, oh. it, it, imagine if the fans were there for that one. It would have just been like even like you know, I was a Spurs fan, but with the contact, they needed it for top four, didn't they? <laughs> and to go and head it in, even I was yeah. like. On the ceiling, with my, we were like, oh, unbelievable, you know, brilliant, I, brilliant. Moment. I remember I had him in my team, but I wanted Liverpool to lose because Leicester were in the, in the fight for the top four. And I was a bit like, I can't oh. believe Alisson just scored. I, and I didn't celebrate because <laughs> I needed him. I needed uh, the, the draw. 
<laughs> I think I, I think I was the opposite because the guy who was chasing me down in Dream Team had a Liverpool block and he had Allison and I remember turning to my, you know after we were just like oh my goodness and it dawned on me yeah. I turned to my wife and say imagine now we lose we lose all this money yeah. because a keeper's gone for a header and scored yeah. a goal it's yeah. just like oh my goodness but yeah mad I can still hear that commentary in my head now Allison in the box Allison <laughs> brilliant moment. <laughs> Unreal, that was. Unreal. Yeah. Back fit. Right. Um, that's the teams gone through. Um, obviously, we've got the uh, Patreon Cup draw to come later on. Um, Looking forward to tuning that. In for that. Yeah, it should be good. See, uh, see who we've all got. Uh, but right now, we'll jump into the uh, listeners' questions. And first up is Connor. Uh, <laughs> quite quick in with this question, quite an early one. Uh, best bowling replacement. Straight away, I think I don't think I don't think you've got off the pitch yet. I think you'd uh, get um, <laughs> he, he, he's he's after an answer for each bracket. Obviously, Bowen, we don't know how long he's out for. We don't know, but um, I'm sure you have touched on a few players. A low priced uh, option at three point nine and under, a mid priced at four to five mil, and a high priced um, option at five mil plus. James. Um, well, firstly, I'd like to apologise to Connor for missing his question last week. <laughs> um, so, yeah, in the in the um, in the cheap bracket, I've gone for Bernardo Silva or Diaz. Um, Mid price, um, I would say Sterling or Madison, possibly Bowen if he's if he's fit. Um, and um, in the top tier, I've gone for Mares and KDB. Um, yeah, we're we just going for midfielders, are we? Yeah. Oh, well, depending on formation, that isn't it? No, that's that's what I was thinking. So I've got, I had an option for uh, midfield or strike, uh, defence and strikers, but uh, Bernardo Silva's just a standout option for me in midfield. Just ticks along, doesn't he? Just gets yeah. points every week. Plays every nearly every game. Uh, for the cheap one, mm, mid priced, I've gone Sterling. Even though he didn't play this game, but they're going to be rotation, so just don't worry about it. He'll play play the majority of the games, and up, f- uh, and the higher higher seat. It's got to be Mares, hasn't it? Oh. Just, <laughs> if you can afford him, seven point five million now, averaging yeah. six point one points a game. It's just. Yeah. yeah, he's been a bit of a beast, hasn't he? He burnt a lot of people as well. Because, like, like uh, Fergie said earlier about getting a cash cow out of his team, and I think I, I know there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of people probably looking at KDB to get him out because of the yeah. penalty situation. He might have burnt quite a few people this week. I think we might touch on that a little bit later. But yeah, Fergie, what, what do you reckon, mate? Yeah, you know, a lot of uh, obvious ones. I think you guys have have said. I don't, you know, I don't think it's any any surprise targeting Man City and and Chelsea and Liverpool. They're the they're the you know three teams that are in form, have the most fixtures, likely to go through in the Champions League. It's, it's really obvious. I think I think one or two others. You know, um, Havertz. Um, you know, I know he's a forward, so you know he, he wouldn't be kind of like flight. But apart from Salah and Kane, the forwards aren't exactly pulling up trees and I know he's a bit of rotation risk but I do I do really think he's starting to find his feet and at 3.8 I think he could be good like Chelsea's fixtures they're insane for the rest of the season they are unbelievable so I think at 3.8 if you were hopping up there could be a decent idea he he seems to have you know usurped Lukaku at the moment as that as that number nine and Chelsea play better with Howitz in the team than they do Lukaku so I think it could be decent. Um, and the only other one I would I'd mention, other than the ones you've already named, um, Kulazewski at Spurs as as an enabler. He's he's two point three million, and he looks really sharp. And he's a midfielder as well. So yeah. just for you know, um, just for a real enabler who have got quite a lot of fixtures left because they've played one of the least amount of fixtures, um, you know, uh, yeah. in the league. Apparently. They've got a lot of fixtures coming up, a lot of good fixtures as well. They have a, you know, have a good finish to the season. I think he could be an outside shot for someone who's looking for, you know, we've we, well, say we, 
Uh, we talked about, you know, Harvey Elliott and, and players like that. I chucked in uh, Donny van der Beek. And, <laughs> but someone like Kulisevsky, I think, is probably a player, realistically, will play a lot of games and probably score a few points as well. So um, other than that, though, you know, the obvious Mares, Sterling and, and everyone else, you know. Yeah, just to touch on that as well. Do you know how Antonio found his way into my team? Um, <laughs> it was it was at the expense of um, reason being is I couldn't afford Havertz with the transfers. I was zero oh. zero point one off Havertz, oh. and I brought him into two other sides as well. Um, it's a little bit of a frustration, but yeah, so he was on mine. Thing, so obviously you touched it then. Oh, we just after midfielder, but Havertz. If you could switch to a front three, because I think a lot of people probably have only got a front two. Uh, Havertz yeah. is a good option. Um, when he first came over to English football, his, his goal scoring record, his assist record is unbelievable or in Germany. Mm. Um, he's he's a top, top player. He's only a young lad. And he seems to be ahead of Lukaku. Does. It, does. It, yeah. it isn't, I think Chelsea are a better side when Havertz plays. Um, Lukaku just seems to, well, the game bypasses him. He, it's like they're playing with 10 men at times, especially going forwards. Um, so, yeah. Havertz is, is one for me in that uh, possibly the cheaper bracket. Um, Diaz at Liverpool looks so good. I mean, I've watched two full Liverpool games now and I've watched 90 minutes of Diaz and Jesus Christ, he got a player there. I, I, do you know when we talk about Bernardo Silva and his energy and that the Duracell bunny never, ever stops. You, you, I, I watched Luis Diaz like, cross a ball from the left-hand side it, it, it bypassed everybody when whenever it, it missed everybody or it were cleared or whatever it ended up on the uh, on the, the other side of the pitch and then the person making the challenge to win the ball back will be Diaz he won <laughs> the ball back and then played it back into the centre <laughs> oh, Jesus where is it what's this lad what's this, what's this lad eating and, and I swear to God it reminds me of Bernardo Silva everywhere on the pitch what energy all the way through um he was he were amazing, amazing. But what worries me a little bit is he's not getting the ratings. No, and it's a little bit of an irritant. Um, mm. Hopefully, mm. as he starts to um, put a few of these chances away or turns a few of these uh, good crosses or uh, passes into assists, we'll, we'll see some uh, we'll see some good scores from him. But he's a very good option. And with the Chelsea fixtures, Ziyech and Mount for me, yeah. um, obviously Ziyech being. I mean, it's a rotation risk. He didn't even come off bench, did he? He was in my better side. I left him in. He's in my top side. Uh, a mount. Um, there were some harsh words spoken about mount on the uh, <laughs> uh, WhatsApp today off, uh, <laughs> off James, which I didn't take too kindly to. But um, my mate Mason, um, top player. Um, we know he, we know he's got the points in him. Um, and with them fixtures, I, I, I think he'll be amongst them at some point. So... Yeah, they're the options for me. And I, I, just another shout as well to uh, what Fergie said about Kulazeski because he seems to have just taken to Premier League football like a duck to water. Exactly like Diaz. Just um, impacting games. Um, yeah. And like you say with Spurs, plenty of fixtures to fill in there, aren't they? So some good options there. But What, uh, well, ben, what about uh, Martinelli for a cheap out up front? Mm. 1.8 million. <laughs> Yeah, they've got a lot of fixtures to rearrange, yeah. aren't they, Arsenal? Yeah. Mm, yeah. In the same point. Boat, Spurs. Yeah. And there's no like I standout think... strikers apart from Kane and Sal- Salah, is there? So you've got a no. space there to put him in, even though we don't usually like putting midfielders, you know, as you strike. I think the only, the only thing with him is when, I think uh, Smith Rose with a couple, haven't he? And I think he had mm. COVID this week, maybe, but yeah. he normally he shares minutes with him a bit, doesn't he? Um, mm. But. But for 1.8 million, you know, I I think a lot of the teams now probably, you know, teams maybe outside the top couple of thousand are having to find that, that one player. You know, the teams who yeah. are kind of higher, you can afford not far off wherever you want because you've built the budget up. But, you, but everyone needs a player like, you know, a two and a half, a three million player and um, not, sorry, you know, those were lower down. Yeah, And I think you just stick him in and leave him, you know, one of those kind of players, maybe Martinelli or Kulazevsky, and just make sure you get in players like, you know, we've all fallen foul a bit before, but not having Reese James, Cancelo and Trent, just as an example, or, mm. you know, or players of that ilk, they can just bang in a 20-pointer, you know, as as 
James and think Trent put a you know a fifteen pointer this week. Um, you know, I have got no doubts Cancelo bang a, a couple more before the end of the season. Whereas, you know, if you spread your funds and you're just getting five pointers, eight pointers with players like Ruben Diaz, I know he's injured now. Maybe John Stones, players like that. For that extra half a million, you're, you're getting mm. those massive hauls, aren't you? And um, yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've I've done it before where I've had like a spread team. I've done it this season actually, where I went for Diaz ahead of Cancelo at the start of the season. And for someone like, um, I can't remember, Rudiger ahead of James. And while Rudiger and Diaz did okay, the full-backs just, they have these one-off games. They're just unbelievable, aren't they? Yeah. Brilliant. Players wingers, don't they, half the time. And so dangerous, like you say, explosive, big holes. And when they haul, they get star men, which players like Rudiger and Stones and Diaz very rarely get star men, do they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're good in their corner. Plenty of options there. Um, Andy Boyne so Chelsea remain in all competition, uh, competitions this season the fixtures both in difficulty and potential volume are absolutely fantastic which over four teams would you say fall into a similar category for the rest of the season as having easier runnings and more fixtures well, Ben um, obviously you do your fixtures don't you love, fi- love your fixtures mate yeah uh, so obviously Chelsea you said so Obviously, for me, Liverpool, Man City are obvious ones. Just potential. Uh, they've got potential games of uh, Liverpool's got potential game of twenty games with all competitions, and Man City's got nineteen. And then, yeah. um, just off the top of my head, I was looking at Arsenal and Spurs, but they don't have as many f- potential fixtures as West Ham and Leicester do. So Spurs have a potential. Oh, Spurs will have thirteen games to play, and Arsenal have thirteen games to play. But uh, West Ham, if they go through to the final of the Europa League, they will have seventeen games. And Leicester have uh, twelve games arranged and three games to be rearranged. And plus, if they get to the Europa Conference final, which I doubt, <laughs> they've got twenty games in total. Mm. So. That was quite an eye opener. Yeah, so twenty I'm more bit... games are getting beat every week, Ben, is it? Yeah. Hey Schmeichel, <laughs> Schmeichel's got two clean sheets now, mate. Man, <laughs> star, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're on they're on the track now, they're on track, they're back they back are. on the boat. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. back to back clean sheets. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> was Ryan Bertrand in them games? Oh, he, he's just come back into training, apparently. <laughs> we don't want him in the team. Oh. God, Southampton's got away with one there. I, I, I say, well, at half time, I thought Southampton were after another 9 0 drubbing this week. Yeah. But we're getting worrying. Um, yeah, Fergie, what do you reckon, mate? Yeah, I think, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd probably go for the teams and the players who've got better scoring potential than just mm. fixture volume. So I think at the moment, Arsenal look superb at the moment. We haven't mentioned Saka yet. And it's probably because I say they're not in the you know, they're not in Europe, but he looks phenomenal. <laughs> um yeah. I'm assuming I'm assuming he's got a fifteen pointer really I'm guessing and, and I'm also assuming that uh you know his ownership is quite low still. Like he's he's a player for example. I would rather have Saka from Arsenal with 13 games, say, and yeah. I don't know, um, a Leicester mid or even a West Ham forward like Antonio or someone like that for the remainder of the season because they're <laughs> sorry, to... sorry that's, that's, that's a dig of both you know. Look. Um, and the same with Spurs, I think, as well. You know, those I think were you know, you know I think it's only really probably Kane and Son out of the two who you know they're not not must haves, but they're that 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 premium sort of yeah, player yeah. bracket, aren't they? And Kulusevski, as I said, maybe from the, you know, if you're looking for an enabler. But I think I would rather them than West Ham players. The only thing I'd say about Leicester is that we know how good Leicester can be. And if we really think that they're on the verge of of, of turning their season round, that could be something, you know, if, if someone's way off top of their mini league, for example, and you just think, look, I need to go. I need to do something massively different. You could just load up on a few lesser assets and just go for it. And and you know, if they keep a couple of clean sheets, if they, you know, if they beat, you know, they've got like um, 
obviously Rennes, they've got Brentford at, uh, uh, Brentford at home, Palace at home, Villa at home, Newcastle away, Everton at home, Watford. They've got some really, really good fixtures, actually. If they batter a couple of those teams, three or four nil, you know, obviously you're going up against other players. But yeah, just um, see how they go. Or, or, or maybe even Vardy, because I thought he... I saw he's quite cheap when he's like four point one or something. You know, if, if he gets on a run, now, yeah. yeah, if he gets on a run, you know, we could um, he could be good. But at the moment, I think Ars- I, I personally think Arsenal and Spurs over West Ham and Leicester, and then obviously you know, and the other obvious three who will make up ninety percent of our teams. Mm. Yeah, yeah, James. Well, like like Ben said, the obvious answer is um, Liverpool and City, um, but. Um, I mean, and I've scanned their fixtures. The the only difficult fixture for Liverpool and City is Liverpool versus City, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Although we do, <laughs> Spurs are coming to Anfield later in the season, so that could be a tricky one. Um, so f- if we forget about those two, because it's almost a no-brainer. Um, I was looking at Arsenal's fixtures as well, and they have an amazing run in. Mm. And um, they only play United out of the top sides for the remainder of the season. Um, obviously, they've got no cup games, no Europe or anything, but uh, yeah. um, like Fergie said, you know, some decent fixtures there. Um, Spurs also have a good run till the end of the season after next week. Um, and then they, they've only got Liverpool away, which I would consider a difficult fixture. So, yeah, I, I think um, City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Spurs would be my top, my uh, four to answer Andy's question. Yeah, you've all hit the nail on the head. I don't need to repeat everything you said. (laughs) Yeah, I think there's um, some good fixture potential there. Leicester being a dark horse because, like I say, we know how good Leicester can be. They could turn the best sides over. Um, Been waiting all season, mate. I know, I know, but (laughs) is it going to come? Is it going to come before the end of the season? We've had a couple of flashes. We beat United, we beat Liverpool. Yeah. But, yeah. Just never he just never hit the stride all season. All season. Mm. Um whether that's due to, due to a hell of a lot of injuries Leicester have had to be fair. Yeah. Then COVID and all that crap that came with that. Yeah, we ain't been crying about it all season like Liverpool were last year about Van Dyke. <laughs> 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 oh, no. Yeah. There are a lot of uh, throwing around about how many days injuries was it? How many how many days can like of continuous injuries of the team had added, whatever? Um, yeah, they're all that kind of shite, weren't they? Uh, all on the back of trying to defend the Premier League title, weren't it? Yeah. But, yeah. I think Leicester have had it hard this year, so if they stick with Rodgers, uh, see what next year brings and see if he, if he can turn it around the back end of this season now, then it'd be good for Leicester going into next year. Right, Matt Woolley. Uh, number one, uh, you obviously have felt this pressure, Fergie, for last year at this time of year, sitting at number one. Um, if you're all in on Liverpool and Man City, with Kane being the exception, is there any need to bring in Chelsea players? Uh, I'll go straight to Fergie with that question. Such, <laughs> such a good question. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a real, it's a real tough one, and. I think um, looking at the fixtures left, because this is a really, it's incredibly short month, isn't it, March? Because of the international break at the end. There's only, after this week now, there's only two more weekends that you can actually use your transfers before you go into, you know, into April. And, you know, just looking. So City have only got three games left now, um, you know, for for this month. Um, They've obviously got sport in midweeks. You can't do anything about that anyway. They then have Palace away, which they they they're a bit of a bogey team. Palace, aren't they? Remember, was it yeah. Andros, was it the, <laughs> the Townsend banged in the top pins, yeah. and they, yeah. and then and then they've got away to um, Southampton as well. So while I expect them to win those games, I do wonder whether you know there's there's uh, better games available maybe for Chelsea because in that same period, so City will have a way to Palace, a way to Southampton, but Chelsea in that time will have uh, Newcastle, Lille and Middlesbrough um, in the Cup as well. I do wonder, you know, if you look at those two, you know, one of them's FA Cup as well. So 
you know, do we think that Pep is going to play um, his strongest team in both those fixtures? In the FA Cup, I don't think so. Um, so realistically, after this week, some Man City players may only have one game left in March. As as you know, as weird as that sounds, but if we, you know, I think I think that's a you know a reasonably fair assumption. Whereas for someone like Rudiger, just as an example, Rudiger plays every single game regardless, does he? He's never rested. So, and also, like looking into next month, um, you probably are going to want to bring a couple in anyway. So I, I personally think, like how I used to like to leave my team was in a, I, I think I've mentioned it a few times, but it's like a state of pivot almost. So yeah. I can, I can, pivot quickly away from a team and also onto a team. So I'd I'd be tempted to try and get in maybe Rudiger or James maybe one but leave in Trent, leave Cancelo and just get yourself to a point where others are chasing you. You're constantly scoring well every week but they're having to go different against you. I think that yeah. that's what I tried to do last year. It served me really well and so I nearly bottled it at the end. <laughs> but um, I would, I, th- I think that's what I do. I think I try and, I try and split it a little bit, you know. And um, yeah, so, sorry, that's yeah, that's that's my answer. I, th- I think with the James move, they're exposed as well. Yeah. Um, obviously, Trent, James, Cancelo. I think having them three, and then in my eyes, blocking on with Mendy and probably Rudiger. I think that's the way to go. But, again, as we touched on last week, if you're heavy on Liverpool, it's so hard to to move that, move across. And when you're in, when you're in the lead, it's it's the moves you don't make, as they say. Um, it is. And, who, and who's to say, right? You could do Edison to Mendy and he might play Kepa. For, <laughs> and, it, and you'd yeah. be absolutely oh, in sick, would not you? It's, yeah. it's really... I would, I would rather have transfers in hand than go for potential short term points and that that's that generally serves me well in all games. But yeah. but saying that, I do think you want a little piece of the pie as well, even if it's only one player. Yeah. Just just so if you know, just so if Liverpool and City do concede and Chelsea don't, you're not you're not forty points behind certain teams yeah. then, aren't you? You're just you you know, you're offsetting a little bit but it's a really tough one it, it is a short month as well so and this is why I say I'd, I'd maybe do it is because even if you do what use one or one or two transfers if it doesn't work out you've still got three to set yourself up for April anyway because you know as, as, assuming Matt hasn't used any transfers yet he's only got five transfers left for two weekends yeah um, but yeah but it's a hard. It's finding that balancing act is so tough. And I, I used two transfers in April when I didn't have to as well, and I took out Mares before he braced in the Champions League semi final, and that was an absolute killer. Just because I felt I had to use him, and I also took out Cancelo before their Carabao Cup final against Spurs, in which he kept a clean sheet and had star man. And I was oh, oh, it's a sickener. It's a sickener. And that and they're two great examples of taking out players because I felt I had to try and use my transfers and yeah. oh, it's really tough it is yeah. I, d- I don't envy you Matt I bet, I bet he's up in the night <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jay. well I, I've been actually agonising over this very question myself um, no, I'm not as high as, as Matt is but um, I, for me I decided to move on to, to move to more of a Chelsea block but then I'm 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 trying to gain rank I think if I was in his position, I'd be much less inclined to do that. I, and particularly with if you've got Liverpool assets, because they've got plenty of fixtures left, they could, they could quite like they've done this 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 week. You know, they could quite easily match uh, uh, Reese James aside. I suppose I mean, they could quite easily match Liverpool stride for stride in in terms of clean sheets. So you're not actually going anywhere, but you're just burning transfers. Um, I'd be inclined not to go too crazy if I was at the top. I think, um, but but uh, but I would stick. I probably well if it was if you would if we were talking Liverpool assets. But with Man City, given that they've potentially got less fixtures, um, well, have they do have less fixtures this month, and potentially throughout the season, if 
Um, we don't know what's going to happen with the Champions League. I, I'd be more inclined to move on some move off some City assets than I would Liverpool, I think. So what do you reckon, Ben? Well, uh, looking at his side, I think um, you just got to stick with the defence, definitely. Um, I wouldn't be, be changing anything myself. And uh, you've got a lovely team. Like, next week, Man City's only got one game. Maybe you could bring in a couple of Chelsea midfielders, but I'd probably just stick stick with the team you got now. You're ahead. Everyone's chasing you. And then at least you've got the transfers to react afterwards. I'd, I like yeah. your team. Yeah, definitely. Sit tight. Sit tight. Like I say, Reese James, mm. you could squeeze him in somewhere. Oh, very nice budget you've got. Should be able to squeeze him in. Explosive player. Willing to get plenty of points and because we have a lot of people chasing you with Chelsea box now, so might uh, offset the damage. But you're in a great back position, Matt. <clears throat> um, keep going. He could do Robertson to Reese James, I think, couldn't he? Because I think they're both five point seven million. Is that right? Yeah, before any yeah. price rise, I think they are. Yeah, they are the same um, same price. Yeah, so I, probably one I'd be looking at that definitely. Mm. Um, I think with the Aspi in, injury, I, I think James is obviously nailed. I mean. He'd be nailed anyway, but I think the injury means I, there's been no uh, ill effects from his last couple of performances uh, from his long term long term injury. So fit firing goal assist got, clean sheet. He got a whack in the Burnley game in the second half, rolling the bout like, but hopefully he'll play against Norwich midweek. Did he come off after that? He, he came, came off, off a bit after later he, on, yeah. Eighty minutes he came off, yeah. Mm. What, how long ago after the knock was that? Oh, I can't put my finger on what time it was. I, I think he was still on for a while. Yeah, mm. nah, that's not yeah. Need to worry about them. I think just on them, um, just on using the transfers as well. We are we are at a point now where you've got there's more transfers left available than there are game weeks left in the season. Mm-hmm. So there's 15 transfers um, left now, isn't there? And there's what is there four to 13 weeks left in the season and one amazing piece of advice I had last year off um, um, a flower pot man was to just almost tick the weeks off and, and, and tick the weeks down so if you just like play the week out this week which obviously he has already obviously because all the games have been played all the first games have been played Look where you are next week. If you're still happy with the team, if you're still where you want to be with rank, tick, great. And then just kind of do the same thing with week and week. And you can also, you can almost get to a point where you're, because I was looking at who is starting the games in the end for Man City, yeah. knowing, knowing, just for example, knowing, I don't know, let's just say Mane was, was going to play two for Liverpool. If Sterling didn't start on the weekend for Man City, I'd be tempted to bring in Marnie because you you know you think that Marnie would play, but just as an example, and and we're almost to that, you know, at that point now where you can you can maybe afford to do that. But that you know just just knowing that there's less game weeks left now than transfers available, um, tr- transfers in hand is massive. It really is. Um, yeah, great advice, sir. Yeah, they are Matt Woolley. Keep going, mate. Um, right, question from Tourette. Um, how did this community and podcast begin? When did you decide to move it on and did you expect the level of interest that it's generated? Uh, good question. Um, how did it begin? Uh, from, I think, <laughs> very, very, the very first uh, video we put onto YouTube was just me muttering my team off and, and giving a bit of a team reveal and, and what I thought was good for the, the Dream Team season onto YouTube. And from there... Um, I got a message off Ben, who uh, who said he'd be interested in coming on and chatting alongside me and putting a bit of Dream Team content out there because by that time there wasn't there wasn't much on YouTube or any, anywhere else really for 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 Dream Team that that we that we'd noticed. So Ben jumped on, so we started chatting together. Um, I think he got to about 13, 13 or fourteen episodes, and we spotted James on Twitter. <laughs> Um, we were doing a bit, doing a bit on his team, posting his team and ranks, and 
uh, posting his points and stuff on there. Obviously, an avid fancy football player, and um, we had a quick chat with him, and we've just bonded since then. To be fair, I, <laughs> we've just uh, three of us. We get on well. Um, great, great group of lads, and we've just grown from there. Obviously, it's been uh, some good camaraderie. We've helped each other through last few dream team seasons, and. Yeah, done all right. Obviously, um, this year uh, we we uh, got, we got speaking to Fergie last year. Obviously, we, how high Fergie was up in the uh, rankings. Uh, how, how long ago was it before you won it, Fergie? We spoke to you a couple of months, was it? A month before? Yeah, I think we spoke in maybe like maybe March because I was I was top since the end of January. It was a long old slog, a long old yeah. running. But I think we chatted maybe end of March. And I was having an hour in over a couple of things, weren't we? And yeah. then, uh, yeah, obviously the Champions League final end of May was when actually won. But yeah, yeah, it was a couple of months before, I think. Yeah, so we got, we got obviously got Fergie and spoke to Fergie a couple of times last year. Obviously celebrated his, his uh, victory and a uh, great chap. Couldn't have gone to a better bloke. And and then this year we've we, uh, teamed up with the Hub. Um, obviously our content's on the Hub as a, uh, as a Dream Team podcast. And then, obviously, I mean, how how did it get how did it get this big? Um, obviously, with the Patreon and stuff, I think the Patreon's more to um, for people just to show a bit of support, just you know, how much time and stuff we put into it. Um, it's literally it, it, it's not it's not replacing a wage. It's not a wage. It's not a, a money grabbing thing. It's just for people to be able to show support and just get a bit of extra content out of it. Um, and it's been going really good, and we've ended up with a great. A great group of lads um, on the Discord, um, which have we, we chat to and we have we have a good laugh and uh, to, yeah, we just try and give our best advice. Um, it, it's been, it's moved really quickly. It has moved really quickly. Um, did we expect it to move this quick? I don't know. I've, after twelve, it's been just over twelve months. I don't know. You lads, Ben. Yeah, it's been amazing the support we've had off of the of the Dream Team community. Um, yeah, what was it eighteen months now we've been going? Yeah. From our first video, <laughs> I was listening <laughs> listen to it the other year, week as well. So cringe the first one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we've improved, haven't we? So, and we're getting a lot of support off the community now. So yeah, brilliant. Definitely, James. Uh, just um, really pleased to, that you guys invited me to to join it, join you, and uh, yeah, the, we're the three amigos now, aren't we? Uh, we, yeah. we get on very well, and um, we've we're, we're going from strength to strength, and we hope to be growing, getting uh, you know, getting even more people involved in the community going forward. Getting more people playing the game as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a great game, and brilliant. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that play FPL and. Sky and other versions and that, and they are missing out on Dream Team. Some people just don't they don't give it a time of day. But when you look at the League Cup games and um, the European games, and people are having to wait four or five days for the next uh, fix of fancy football, Dream Team players happy as Larry. Champions League games are coming around. We're watching our players playing seven days a week. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's um, a, a good one. Um, uh, obviously, the, the pace on the is you see obviously it's not it's not a wage and it's not something that changes our lives or but it's, it's nice to hear the support because it means I can drop a missus thirty quid and tell her to go out and buy a dress at the weekend uh, and, and leave me alone while I study fancy football. <laughs> um, that, that, that's literally so it helps me um, it helps me concentrate on my fancy football and uh, keep the missus off my back. So yeah, we honestly we so honestly though in, in all like, just aside. We appreciate the support so much, and there's a lot of people, and we we hear a lot of uh, kind words and stuff. That I do try and screenshot as many as I can. Uh, all the nice messages coming in about how well people are doing on the back of listening to the podcast, um, and it's it's good to listen to. Uh, it's good to see. It's it's nice. It makes it makes all these Sundays and all these Mondays worthwhile, and all the time that we put in. Um, if people benefit from it within the mini leagues and stuff, and we're like their secret weapon in their works leagues, and it's good. Um, the only the only shame about it is that because people use it as a secret weapon, they don't spread the word. <laughs> do they? 
Yeah. <laughs> and that's the only downside. But hey, we can't have everything, can we? So yeah, that's a good question. Cheers to that. And obviously, we, we appreciate everyone's support. Um, and hopefully, it helps you win, win your mini leagues. And as well as obviously, Matt Woolley joining. Uh, hopefully, he's, an, he's another winner uh, like Fergie last year. Uh, Right. You do amazing, okay. lads, as well. Because uh, oh, I was just going to say, no, no, I just appreciate how how much work it goes into it as well. Like you know, obviously being a a content creator, I don't just like rock up at eight o'clock, you know, on a Sunday and just you, you know and just kind of chat. There's a lot of prep that goes into it. I know there is, you know, both both yeah. pre podcast and and post as well. I think to keep to keep doing it every single week, um, you know, you become very reliable and, and a part of people's week and they you know enjoy the interaction enjoy the community enjoy the camaraderie and that and that and that to me is what builds up you know a, um, a podcast a community of players it's that you know, it's that reliability and you know and um friendship and you know and just keep tuning it out so you think you've done an incredible job lads in the last year fair play too thanks Cheers, Fergie. Fergie. Cheers, Fergie. um hey another uh Another one of the, the guys we know, Dan Cox, has been on. Uh, you were obviously on the podcast the other week. Um, why is Havertz down as a striker? <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame, isn't it? Um, obviously, when, when, when we look back, I mean, we, I say it's a shame, but now we're probably looking at is is a good third third option as a striker yes. um, compared to the midfield options. Obviously, we've struggled in the past, haven't we? The midfield it's always been a, a, a tricky one. Um, but at this moment in time, I think Havertz down as a striker is a good thing. Yeah, we, um, we finally have a three-five-two formation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, it's interesting how he how like he's a striker and Salah's a striker, and yet you know mm-hmm. Sterling's a mid yeah. and stuff. I wish like. But then, on the same note, I think Sky have gone a bit too much the one way. They've made all these forwards all str- all strikers, haven't they? And it mm. it kind of ruins it a bit because you just can't have everyone. Whereas if they were midfielders, it widens the game up. So it is, it you know, it is interesting. And I sometimes think, oh, you know, they they should put all the positions in the right place. And I think if they did do that, it would it would kill a lot of options in the game off, which is obviously not good. So yeah, yeah. Yes, Salah, Salah and Mane used to be midfielders in the game. Then they yeah. put him up front. Sterling was a midfielder. Then they put him up front last yeah. couple of years. They put him back in midfield. Havertz was midfield last year. Havertz is a striker this year. It's the keep moving it all around. I think they're trying to balance it, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. They're trying to balance it so you've got good options in both yeah. things. But then depending on form and other things is when we would whinge or when we would complain. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If if, if you had a, a decent balance and all the all the midfields and strikers and you had four good options in midfield, you had three good options up top, you never you never complain. But sometimes it's like it feels like everyone in midfield is hitting top four, and you're like, they should be strikers because then you could move a, an extra one in. But ah, I get it, I get it. I, I don't think you'll ever be able to balance it right. Not with not mm. when you've got these wide forwards. No, you're right. Uh, you're right. Yeah, I don't think you'll ever be able to balance it properly, but. I get what you say is, uh, is if Salah is a striker playing wide right, Mares is a striker, is he not? Or uh, yeah. we're watching a different game. Um, yeah. It's 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 almost like football's evolved, but the traditional positions of defending midfielders and strikers haven't, have they? They they yeah. haven't evolved. They're still you're either one of the three. Where there's a lot of like yeah. look at Reese James, he's not. Like he's not a defender, is he really anymore? Like, okay. like and Trent and and Cancelo, all these kind of players. Yeah. Whereas Salah's not a striker, but he's not a midfielder either. It's almost like yeah. you need these like five positions, but you know it's yeah. it's not going to happen. But it is it is interesting how the different games all deal with it. I think. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So we'll jump on to the next one. Interesting question. Obviously, um, we were touching it earlier about. Diaz not getting these uh, seven rating. Henry Cartridge has been on on Twitter. Thoughts on players that are favoured or not by the scoring algorithm this season. Was very surprised to see Louis Diaz, Louis Diaz not on the seven rating again, uh, as I was. Um, and Port and Poker on the uh, <laughs> on the old, the old Discord has been on. Being new to this, can you explain to me 
this to me, boys. Can't believe Diaz got zero points for Liverpool. Do you think his style may not suit Dream Team? Um, seems seems crazy when the wrong uh, a defender comes on in the ninety fourth minute, as an example, and gets a five points for a clean sheet. Um, yeah, James. Well, um, I mean, I think for, for any new players of the game that don't know, it's worth running through how the ratings are are done. And that for, I'm sure there's still a few people out there that don't know. Um, so who scored provide the ratings for Dream Team? Um, they've got an app as well, which you can download. Um, it's a bit more reliable than the Dream Team app, so it's actually probably worth downloading. Um, so... Um, The Who Scored ratings are based on unique, a comprehensive statistical algorithm calculated live during the game. There are over 200 raw statistics, including including in the calculation of a player's rating. Um, um, And it's weighted against their influence within the game. So basically, it's, it's really difficult for us to ascertain exactly how that algorithm works because they don't publish it. It's secret. Um, but, um, that, I mean, we've had some theories over the years, um, cause certain players become sort of dream team. Um, how can you put it? S- uh, star men magnets, as we call them, um, players like Adama Traore. So we, he gave, he led to the theory that, um, players that, uh, dribble past players are more likely to receive a higher rating. And I think that's probably true. Although, although I haven't looked at the detail statistics, um, I've watched uh, Luis Diaz, and that, that seems to be part of his game. He's certainly drib- doing a lot of dribbling, and, and to, that in the last game, he uh, he actually went from just outside our um, penalty box and dr- literally um, went went up the, went up the other end of the field and nearly scored, and he didn't end up with a seven rating. So yeah, I'm at a bit of a loss, really. Um, myself, I don't. What What are your thoughts, guys? Um, I completely uh, have a clue. <laughs> 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 like looking at his ratings, Diaz, he's got six point three versus Cardiff, seven point five against Leicester, six point three versus Inter, eight point one versus Norwich. He got a goal in that game. Eight point two versus Leeds, six point seven for Chelsea, six point two versus Norwich and 6.8 versus West Ham. So, I I don't know how he's not getting the seven ratings. He's been the best player in the last two out of three games. Yeah, the, Ch- the Chelsea game and the West, the West Ham game. game yeah. Best player on pitch. Yeah. yeah. By a mile. I, it weren't even, I don't even think it was like even close. Mm. It's literally like they, they must want you to get a goal or an assist to get something to get a seven rating. I don't know why. Yeah. I remember Salah last season. Salah, he wasn't getting the seven ratings if he didn't score. Yeah. When he scored, he got seven ratings. And then Mane wasn't scoring, but he was getting the seven ratings last year. Yeah, it was. It was Salah, weird. Salah were getting the Starman awards and the goal when he got the goals. Yeah. But then Mane were mopping up with the seven ratings. Mm. Mm. It's, a, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I, it's a frustration if you've got Diaz. Um, I've him a few teams now, and I've, yeah, I, I'm not even. I'm not a Liverpool fan, but Salah. I know we said last last week as well about Salah not getting taken off and Mane being upset about because Mane got took off. Um, it was refreshing to see Salah get t- taken off this week because again, you were probably out of the front three, the most ineffective. He weren't happy, happy, was he? No, and, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, to be fair, these are top drawer players, aren't they? They just they, they fancy themselves every minute yeah. of every game, so they think you're taking me off with ten minutes to go. I'd have scored in the next ten minutes. That's that's what they've got in their head. But um, again, will Diaz stay on the pitch? Because he was the most influential player on the pitch. Mane playing well, he stayed on the pitch. Uh, did it surprise that he took him off, James? Sorry, to say again. Did it surprise you that he took Salah off? No, I, I don't. No, I wasn't because Salah didn't have the best game. He missed a couple of chances. Yeah. I mean, he didn't play terribly, but he wasn't. Um, he wasn't quite himself. I would say. Yeah. 
What do you reckon, Fergie, about all this palaver with the algorithms? And yeah, I think like I've got to be honest. I've got a bit of a different opinion with it, and I just not not with you know Diaz per se, but I do, I do think it is a. It's, well, it's not a skill. It's, it's how much time you want to invest just in understanding how the which factors affect them. Because, you know, let's look at, uh, you know, earlier with Man City with Cancelo. Apparently, you know, he had an absolutely outstanding game, got, you know, a seven rated in Dream Team, mopped up in Sky, got, you know, full tackle bonus, full passing bonus, because they're the attributes you look for in Sky. But in FPL, he got, you know, zip, because that's, that's, the, that's the way... That the scoring works for FPL and the bonus points algorithm work works in FPL. Yeah. So you know, and I and I understand that. If if if, if Paul McNulty is listening, I do I do understand the rules. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, and 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 the same in Telegraph, right? So in Telegraph, you got nothing. Whereas in Dream Team and Sky, you get you get points, different things. So I suppose I suppose I kind of liken it. I'd liken it onto that a little bit, just that, like, like. <laughs> Rashford, like Rashford, end of last season. He's he's a prime example. Uh, Rashford was awful. Well, well, he's been awful for a long time, right? But he kept giving a seven rating. Yeah. Every game he played, every game he got a seven rating because because of the take ons. So I put in Rashford at the end of the season, knowing damn well he wasn't going to score any goals, but <laughs> but, but knowing he was going to get a seven rating. So I I think you know I think the argument here you know here with it is is we're playing a we're playing a fantasy game, which doesn't always reflect how you how you view a game, yeah. and understanding yeah. the attributes and scoring system is a massive part of doing well or not. So, if Luis Diaz is playing fantastically well and not getting ratings, maybe just like like ex- exactly as he said, his style clearly at the moment doesn't suit Dream Team. Whereas yeah. he's used a really good example of you know a defender comes on in in the in the ninety fourth minute. And gets five clean sheet points, which is something we yeah. said right at the start of the season about Rhys James yeah. and Spilicueta, about did. why about why they are such good options in this game. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so I'm I'm a bit less I, I wouldn't say less sympathetic, but I do. I look at the fantasy rules and scoring more than I look at the matches, if that makes yeah. sense. So, uh, yeah, definitely. I think I think once just to touch on that as well is that he obviously Ben, you round off. His ratings. Mm. He's had a few good ratings. Yeah. Obviously, got a goal. Um, I think anybody that does all him, I don't think he's quick. I don't. I wouldn't be so quick to get rid of him or anything no. like that. I think he's such a dangerous player. I think once those assists and goals yeah. start to come, because he's in the areas. He's yeah. like James said. He's run from one end of the pitch to the other end of the pitch, and nearly scored. If he scores that, who knows? He might be getting star man. We don't know, but. He's he's in the right areas. He's doing the right things. Um, I think he just let, let, let's let's see over the next few weeks. Um, but he's definitely a top draw player. Yeah. Whether he's a top draw dream team option, as Fergie says, we don't know yet. It's still early days, but, but it looks like exactly as you said. He needs to return to yeah. to, to to rate, yeah. which is very different from play. Like I say, Rashford last year. Adama yeah. Troyori at points. They just need to turn <laughs> yeah. up and they get the seven rating. And yeah. Um, yeah. I think Diaz Absolutely. got star man in sky as well yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah, he had man of the match in sky. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, it's not a surprise, is it? He was the best player on pitch. But yeah, obviously, that doesn't always filter down into the, uh, the, the dream team algorithm. Um, right, DT oh. Patrick. I do like this question. Um, <laughs> any simple but effective mind games you recommend playing with a rival? I know I've been thrown by said rival in the mini league, e.g. criticising my player choices and sowing the seeds of doubt. <laughs> any dark arts you know of? James? <laughs> well, I tried a few dark arts earlier today on our WhatsApp group by um, <laughs> when uh, Ramsdale lost his clean sheet. Uh, Oh, that didn't go down well. Too, down, down, yeah, down you keep trying me now. You keep trying me. <laughs> I'm not happy. I keep getting these. Uh, every time a player loses his points, so I'm getting reported by James. <laughs> so his player has fucking no points. 
Uh, I, I guess if, if a player's got a bad injury re- record, <clears throat> um, you, you, you can you can plant things in people's heads without telling nice. Um, you know, <laughs> you can always say, uh, oh, you brought in Vardy, or will his agent hip, hips be able to hold out? Can he play? Can he play those two games? And next thing you know, they've made a raft of tra- they've blown a raft of transfers. So they think, oh, he's right, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have gone for ZH with the rotation in that midfield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and in in FPL, I used to enjoy project, predicting um, uh, rivals' transfers, and that used to really wind people up. Um, um, they had no idea how I how how I used to do it. Um, you could figure you could you could have an educated guess based on the number of transfers they've made and the amount of money they had in the bank. And um, these, unfortunately, you can't do that anymore. But um, that's one example of, um, I suppose, what you might call dark arts that I have used in the past. But um, no, I'm not really, uh, I'm not one of these people that trolled all the time. But um, I suppose there are. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few things you can you can plant seeds in people's heads, can't you? What do you think, guys? <laughs> I'm I'm not one for for this sort of thing myself. Like I've, <laughs> I've, I've been in mini leagues and on group chats and people giving it all this, giving it all. Oh, da, 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 I, I can't. I don't get involved with it, me. And then at the end of the season, then I go, oh, there you go. I've beat you. <laughs> <laughs> I just ignore them. Don't take part in the mind games. No, nah, just play your own game. Don't worry about them. Yeah. Fergie? I think what I've done in uh, in Telegraph, because obviously in Telegraph and in and in Sky, people can't see your teams or how many transits you've got left. So I have, <laughs> I've definitely a couple of times in the you know past few years gone like, oh, you know, really struggling, just hanging on in there. Only got like, you know, I can't remember. I can't about 12 transits there when I'm sitting on like, 25 you know really really sweet um whereas i think i think more on on dream team which i'm assuming is what uh patrick is talking about i think it's just yeah i think it's just chat i think it's you know it's um like you know your your plan you've done all your research you've got your plan in place and it's just you know it's just chat and, and try and get Try and get them to use their transfers. If you can do that, oh, I can't believe you haven't got so and so. Are you really oh, going without him yeah. this week? Are you sure? Oh. <laughs> well, well, blipping F. I, I'm doing this this week. If you don't do, I think you're mad, you know. And just, uh, you know, just a bit of that, but nothing, you know, nothing any more than that. But uh, just a bit of chat, as you say. Your rival seems to have got you, you know, it, you know, in your head a little bit. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't criticize their choices as such, but I think seeds of doubt is in. I definitely, I'm definitely putting in so-and-so next week like you know yeah. a man city player next week for example is probably someone i wouldn't do so i'd be like you're not putting maras in next week are you, are you absolutely mad really he's like the highest scoring midfielder in the game oh my are you really not whereas he may only play one game for the rest of the month you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's funny you say that uh so in that season doubt is that won me a mini league i know i've touched on this before <laughs> in previous parts <laughs> really <laughs> completely a lot at work whether you're listening today dan uh, you'll be happy about this. Um, <laughs> basically, it was when I, I I had Aguero in my side. He had Harry Kane, and it come to the transfers, and it equipped to the, the new transfers. And this over, I was saying about basically how how can you not have Aguero? Like basically, you're gonna have to have Aguero. Aguero's this is this, 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 this. talked him into this Aguero move. Obviously, saying about how he's gonna smash it. He switched to Aguero, but I took Aguero out, put Harry Kane in, and that was right before he scored seven goals in one week. <laughs> and the fifty, the fifty, the 50 point deficit, it, it put me, it put me like sixteen points ahead of him, and I went on to win the league. Oh and honestly, I, he's still working at the same place as me. He, he was listening to this. I enjoyed that so much <laughs> <laughs> because it was real. Honestly, he had it sewn up. He was fifty points clear. He had it sewn up. And uh, yeah, just that little bit of mind game, just that little bit of uh, putting that bit of doubt in him, thinking, "Oh shit, yeah, Aguero is yeah." And Harry Kane went and bagged it for me. Happy class. days, oh, class. But yeah, uh, yeah, I love that question. Good one. Um, I'm on Tatler. Um, we'll give you another shout out, mate. I'm sure we did cover it 
last week, but he was the game week 25 cash winner. Um, so well done, Alan Tatler. He's been on. Who should I replace Mount with? I'm going to answer this first up. Why are you replacing Mount? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> My lad Mount, he's all right. Um, they've got the fixtures, Chelsea. Um, he's a bit more nailed, I'd say, than ZH. I, I like both options, me, for, for best at month. And, and I look a bit beyond, obviously, with Chelsea. They've got some great fixtures. But, yeah, I wouldn't be replacing Mount. Obviously, I, I don't see your team. But, yeah, I won't be touching him. James? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Mount's a decent option with Chelsea's fixtures coming up, despite what I might have said earlier <laughs> in our WhatsApp group. Um uh, uh, I would say um, if you really set on it, then Madison is a good option. Assuming, well, Brendan said he'll be back 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 next week. It was it was only a minor lower back injury, I think. Um, he's actually 0.1 cheaper than Mount. Um, I suppose if you're playing with the front, if you're not playing with the front three at the moment, you could do you could bring in Mane. Um, he's similar sort of price. Um, yeah, I think that's that would I'd, I'd go Madison probably if assuming you know there's no negative injury reports on him. Yeah, Ben, I'll have to pull up the old Mel Gibson gif here with uh, Braveheart. Hold <laughs> and fixtures coming up. You got to hold him. Yeah, come on, not Newcastle, Lille, Middlesbrough for that till the end of the month, and then it carries on after that. So. And he's the most ma- nailed attacking midfielder. He should, have two, he should have had two against Liverpool. He's got five. He mate. should have, yeah. He missed he missed he's one missed. absolute sitter, didn't he? Yeah. Unreal. He obviously tried to put it too far into the corner and it yeah. inside a pause. Um open net. But Fergie, what do you reckon? It's the transfers you don't make that win you it. Yeah. Leave him in, yeah. flipping heck. Leave him in. That's just a waste. Well, mm. you know. Obviously, there's an argument that if Mount doesn't do anything, then say Marnie does. But you know, you've got to choose choose your transfers and choose your battles, and this isn't one. Just leave him in. He's I I would guess he's quite low owned as well. Well, so, you know, in in the context of you know of other players, you've actually got a differential who is primed to potentially have a very profitable two or three weeks. Absolute yeah. hold, hundred percent. Yeah, I'll hold in my book. Um, obviously, we, we, we've touched on the bone injury. Hopefully, it's not too bad. Um, just a few talking points. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll uh, try to keep people informed about that. What do you make of United's performance today, especially from 70 minutes onwards? Where <laughs> I, I just thought they stopped running, didn't they? <laughs> they just went, oh, fuck it. It's yeah, gone, it? Um, embarrassing to a degree. Um, what do you think though uh, Fergie they're just not good enough and and that you, you know they're not good enough and I've you know as, as much like I I grew up in the 90s you know and the and the, the early 2000s when they absolutely dominated everything and they they were a class above anyone and 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 now as much as I hate to say it well, you know, because I know I'll take stick for it as I do whenever I say this kind of thing, but they remind me of just, you know, they've got one too many prima donnas in their team who are who are who are more um, more concerned with how things look than actually getting results on the pitch. And you know, I'm very much in in Roy Keane's camp when he goes in a rant. That's the kind of stuff I'd be saying if I was a team. I'd be saying, "What the hell are you doing? What are you doing? How how can you? You know, you look. You just look at. You look at. You know, look at." Foden versus Rashford, right? You know they play reasonably in the same sort of a position. Look at the body language. Look at the energy. Yeah. Look at the intensity. I'm not even talking about talent. I'm yeah. talking about everything aside from talent. Yeah. Body language, intensity, um, will, graft, chasing back, chasing lost causes. They are on different levels, mm. different, different stratospheres. And I think that's what's wrong with United is they've got too many of those. And Harry Maguire, like, I feel sorry for it. It's got to a point where I I feel sorry for Harry Maguire because he's clearly just not uh, not a good top four Premier League defender. He'll he'll do one odd thing which people go, oh, look, but he's done this. But then you just look at 
Look at Rudiger and look at Ruben Diaz. Look at the things they do every single game. They do those things that Harry Maguire does one in 10 every game. Yeah. You never, yeah. you very rarely see them make it, you know, obviously everyone makes a mistake. But, you, you know, look at Rudiger, look at Ruben Diaz, look at Van Dijk and look at Harry Maguire. And it's just far, I just do not understand why the, why why he's he's there, why he's captain. He's just not good enough. And, and you know, I'd, I've ridiculed him, but I'm starting to feel sorry for him because he's clearly out of his depth. And that's, and that's not his fault. Um, Anyway, long rant, but yeah, it just no. it no, just I farcical. Echo every single word you've just said. I think it's nail on the head that they really are struggling. United, um, like you say, I've grown with the with a way superior team all the way through my childhood, and and it, it's, it's strange yeah. to see them. They just they're just so far behind. You got, I, I'd say two two teams in. Liverpool and City that are other than Chelsea. I mean, Chelsea are a good side. I, I think I think they're so far ahead of everybody else, and United are getting left behind. Arsenal have been left behind over over the last few years, and same with Spurs as well. Is it struggling to like change the transition from the? You can have like this solid team, a good team, and then the few changes and stuff, and this transitional period not quite got it right, and and obviously. City Liverpool have managed to build on like a few years of success and then just have a continuance, a continuance of this like Jurgen Klopp inputting what he does at Liverpool, Guardiola inputting what he does at City. And you watch City play, you, you, they're playing United like they're playing against some under twelves at some points, <laughs> passing it around them and and, and making making them look silly in some stages and. Oh, that's that's Man United, that. Uh, but then it's lack it's lack of a game plan. Look at you know I'm I'm a Spurs fan, so it's easy to be kind of biased. But look so look how Spurs set up against Man City. Mm-hmm. Look how Leicester have in the past as well, for an example, yeah. and and other teams. So a lot of teams set a low block. Spurs and Leicester have proven you know more more than once. They they just wait. They just wait. They just wait, and then they try and take their chance on the break. Yeah. Whereas United just run round with no. They just haven't got a, um, they've got an identity on how you know on 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 how they play. So if, you know, it's clear, for example, that Spurs play just pure play on the break. But Spurs have got you know plays like Son and Kane to actually do damage. Leicester yeah. have had you know Vardy etc. to to do the damage. This is why you know teams like maybe Burnley and Norwich struggle struggle to kind of win because you know they they their players aren't good enough. Yeah, but Man United probably have got decent enough forwards to actually do that if they played to a game plan. But as you say, passing it round them, it's a complete, complete embarrassment. They must be so embarrassed. And and I suppose the motivation, if it dips under 100%, even if it goes down to 90%, they just get run ragged. And that's what's happening in it. Yeah, definitely. Anyone else want to uh, jump in on? I think Fergie, Roy Keane and yourself have um, have nailed it. <laughs> uh, Michael Richards had a go as well, didn't he? At the end, yeah. Uh, it's 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 good. It, I do like it when Keane goes on a rant. Uh, it is ent- it is entertaining. He's I just right, love the no. I just love the no thing about you know about you just got to run through what you know. We've you know we've all played. Obviously, not to any you know. Well, I haven't anyway. Not to any kind of you know really decent level. But, but we've all yeah. played football and we know what we need to do when the chips are down is you you know you run through yeah. walls in the context of your you know of your own ability right you never see man united doing that as a team and certain individuals man united never doing it either you don't see them absolutely busting a gut just to try their damnedest to get a result for the team do you? Mm-hmm. and um yeah it's and you and you see other teams do it and that you know and that's why other teams you know, even though they're not as good as Man United, get the odd result or don't get battered. Even if they get battered, at least they've got a little bit of pride out of it because it's expected. Whereas, yeah. to say United, it's just oh, sorry. I keep, I, keep, I, keep, I keep, I keep, I keep like going on about it, but I just like Roy Keane. You can just see, you can imagine him just pull your socks up and get stuck in. Just yeah, get stuck it. in, even minimum. if they were showing like. Even if they were flat on the end of the field, you know, flat yeah. on their hands and knees out of exhaustion, not because they're embarrassed, but they're just not. They're not, yeah. are they? No, 
It was just the last 20 minutes. And I didn't see a sprint. <laughs> Where's just... their pride? Where's their pride? Yeah. <sighs> got to ask, haven't you? Um, Next week's going to be interesting when their Spurs turn up at Old Trafford. Mm. See what oh. how that goes. I mean, Kane and Son. Yeah. Uh, they win 6 2 there last year or something like yeah. that. Yeah. 6 1. 6 1. Mm. You've got Kane and Son springing on the back of um, Lindelof and Maguire. This is going to be carnage. I, I fancy Spurs there. Fancy, fancy. United now, you know, all like on the the fixture tickers, they're all still like you know they're a hard fixture attacking wise. They're not. They, you know, okay, it's <laughs> it's hard to maybe get a result, but it's not. They're not hard to score against, are they? No, it should be changed. Changed to a big green. Uh, right, yeah, Ericsson and Williams. Um, nice little cuddle on the floor. Did you see that the weekend? <laughs> that was funny. That. It looked like you were about to deck him. Yeah, and then he noticed. Oh, it's Ericsson. Oh, all right, mate. I'll give you a cuddle instead. <laughs> what are all that about? I, I thought that was brilliant. To be honest, I love yeah. that. Um, and who, who wouldn't want to give Christian Ericsson a hug? Because uh, <laughs> what he went through last summer, uh, I think I think I, I'd do the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, great to see Ericsson back playing football. To be fair, um, he's, a, he's I think he's one of uh, Fergie will probably agree. He's been a Spurs fan as well, and one of the nice guys in football seems Ericsson, uh, good guy. Class, yeah, and of all the players to kind of do it to as well. You know, not not only because <laughs> they're like really good friends, but you, you know, can you imagine that he uh, I don't know, he injured him or something like that, or he would have been <laughs> he he would have been uh, he wouldn't have been popular, would he? Flipping it, no, no. no. Class. I'll move on to a uh, back-to-back clean sheets for Smackle. Uh, ben. <laughs> so are, are we tipping in? Uh, what price is he at? <laughs> yeah, he's about to minus zero point seven. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't put him in yet. But yeah, Arsenal next weekend, isn't it? So. It's not- Nice to see a couple of clean sheets for Leicester. They absolutely yeah. hounded all year, haven't they? And Starman as well at the weekend. Do you know, after his um, little interview in Euros, don't really like Schmack anymore. Oh. <laughs> but but um, it's good good for Leicester, a couple of clean sheets. They've had it tough, haven't they, with all the injuries at the back line. And it's good to see a couple of clean sheets since that Liverpool game. Yeah. I love how on the agenda as well, you've put back-to-back clean sheets for Smichael lol on the end. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was really good on sat, uh, Saturday. Yeah. He saves, He kept us in the game. Yeah. Ex-Leeds player. Have you seen his um, his uh, documentary on ITV about Casper Schmeichel's career? No. And um, he used to play for Leeds, didn't he? And the Leeds fan come up. Leeds fan comes and says, "Why, why you leave? Why do you leave then?" He was like, "Well, what about this? Uh, your dad's a cunt, but you're all right." <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Well, now if you heard you heard the whole stadium singing that to you, would you stay and play for them?" Flipping, <laughs> <laughs> eh? Well, obviously, the Leeds United, uh, right? Leeds versus. Man United rivalry. Yeah. Wow. Is uh, still uh, as fierce as it once was. <laughs> oh, You're going to have to get the bleep, bleeper out, Tony, when you edit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the the C bomb's been dropped. <laughs> uh, you're usually all right at an hour and 23 in. We're all right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to play for Leeds either. Um, right. Ben, yeah, you're up, mate, um, for the mini league top ten, the Dream Team Tonic Cash League. You're going to uh, be reading it tonight, mate. Right, only I'll... because you're the only one not to appear. Oh, I've dropped you, out. You're not far off there, though. It's really close, isn't it? I hey, I've, wor- far- I've got. I got into the top ten last week. Oh, been working my way up from fiftieth. Top ten I dropped out again this week, haven't I? <laughs> Just, just, it's really oh, well. close. It switches around every week. Yeah, 
Well, yeah, Fergie's, Fergie's dropped down, haven't you? you were I was third, like, last week or the yeah. week before. What's <laughs> happened there? Flipping heck. Yeah. Never Keenan. <laughs> so, the top ten of the Dream Team Tonic Mini League. We have Fergie time in tenth, tenth. place. <laughs> Ninth place, James Fricker. I'm back. Yes. <laughs> You're back in there. <laughs> Sir Alex FC, Alex Cole. Eighth place. Seventh place, Henry Cartridge, wing it. Joint fifth, Tony Sutcliffe, Drinking Tonic Get Podcast. In. Get in. With Goldie Get Looking in. Kane, Kerry Jones. Climbing. Fourth place, Dan Sherwood, Gold Hunting. Third place, Heath Robson, Panenka FC. Second place, Steve Legg, Steg DTT3. And top of the shop, Alex Cole. Sir Alex FC two. Happy days. It's he's so close. It he's is close there, now. Especially from where I am in fifth, joint fifth, mm. all the way down. Obviously, we can't see any further. But Jesus Christ, there's so many teams below that. That usually every week now, from fifth downwards, it's a it's a bit of a lottery whether you make it on or not. So um, it's it's good to see um, top four. Obviously, Alex Cole doing well at the top there. Now he's he's got a forty-two point lead. Um, yeah, happy days. DT Tonic Patreon League, um, the exclusive Patreon League. Um, I'll give this a read because I'm nowhere near um, my podcast teams in this one, so it's not uh, not doing the best. So the Patreon League, we've got in tenth. Connor Story with Wendy's Nuts. In ninth, Sean Sinol, Paul Bags. In eighth, Fred West Ham, Michael White. In seventh, <laughs> Andrew Barnett, 001 DT Hero. In, se- in sixth, Connor Tobin, Flying Without Ings. In fifth, James Fricker, Dream Team Tonic Podcast. Get in. Nice. In fourth, Stephen Broughton, Steve Biarmy. In third, Paul McNally, What the Deuce. In second, David Moisey's shriveled ball bag with David Dunkley. <laughs> and in first, we've got Ben Lee. Dream Team Tonic, Ben. Come oh, on. Whoa. You know what I mean? Nice. So you've only had to, you had to read the last one out. You you sat top at shop in this one. Yeah. Um, your lead has cut to three points, but you're yeah. still there, mate. Sat at the top. Just. Um, but yeah, uh, really good to see. Really good to see. Um, again, thanks, everyone. It was in the Patreon League. Thanks for your support. Um, we've got the uh, top 1K ins and outs on there. Um, is there anything that stands out to anybody? The one one for me um, on the transfer ins is uh, Chalabauer on there. Kulazewski, <coughs> another one that uh, you touched on, Fergie, uh, one of the Spurs lads. And Havertz had 4,500 transfers in this week, which a uh, very uh, fruitful little transfer for some people there. Is there anything else that's uh, a touch on James, you reckon? Um, no, I can't see anything that you wouldn't wouldn't expect to see on there, to be honest. Not that you, that you haven't mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, it's obviously a little bit normal, doesn't it? On the transfer a- out, you've got uh, what, what, one, one on the transfer out is De Bruyne at 5,000 transfers out. Ooh. <laughs> it's ah, going to sting. It is. Ah. I apologise for anyone listening to you transferred De Bruyne out. And what Coutinho you... as well. Yeah, oh. oh, God. Yeah, it can be a little bit painful sometimes reading this. Um, but do, you yeah. know, do you know what's a shame is Ronaldo's injury? Because that's like freed up a lot of money for people <laughs> to bring yeah. in better other players, like make the did, squads a bit better. Did you... I know you had Ronaldo fairly. Have you... Um... What have you done with him? I moved into Kane. I, I didn't have him in that team. Yeah, I just moved in just a straight yeah, swap to Kane. Straight if I'd, to Kane. If I'd have had any transfers in the last uh, of last month, I would have done the same. But um, yeah. yeah, just on the transfers in, there are a couple. I know they're right down the bottom. There's still a fair chunk for like players like Kilman and Broya, and um, mm. yeah, I, they're quite expensive as well. I think. Kilmer the three point five is is quite quite expensive, but but they're the kind of transfers I think you know should 
really try and avoid because yeah. I can understand that people chase in short term yeah. points, but they're definite transfers out. Whereas if you transfer in some other players from better teams, you may end you know, you may find they end up like like Silva is a really good example of when we you know, we transferred in late last year because he was really cheap. But he plays at Man City. As it's happened, he just carries on and on and on scoring, so we don't leave him. That's that's never going to really be the case with players like Kilman and Broya. You know, they they go in and go out. They're effectively two transfers in two weeks. Say, yeah. So I just a bit of advice. I, tr- I try and av- even if, even if they score a couple of goals, they're still two transfers. So I just absolutely avoid those kind of players this time of year. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Right. Now we've got the excitement. We're an hour and 30 in. We've got the excitement of the uh, DT Tonic Patreon Cup draw. Um, so we've got, we're going to be drawing six groups of five uh, for the for the group stage, the 30 teams in <coughs> Um I'm going to be drawing the teams. Uh, I'll have my spreadsheet up here for which number is which. And James, you'll be jotting down the teams into the groups. I will, yep. We're not going to do the whole um, Champions League crap where they go first draw is in Group A, second draw is Group B. We're going to go full on. As I draw them out, they all go into Group A. Yeah? They all got there. Um, right. Right, chaps. So, as I say, we'll uh, we'll get on with the draw. Um, I'm picking, obviously. I'm on here with all the pieces of paper. So we'll pick them out, and as as we go, we're going all the way through Group A. We'll regroup A out, and then uh, yeah, let's get cracking. So first one out is see if I can get hold of it. Number twenty nine, Leuton. Um, sorry, yeah, Leuton, yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry. Oh, I, it's me. Yeah. It's, it's me. It's me. Fix. <laughs> Fix. So, I'm the first one out. Hey, look at that. Group A. Second one out. 16. Mark McKee. More corrupt than Blatter. Mark McKee. <laughs> you're in Group A with me, mate. Third out. Number four. Andrew Barnett. Oh, Blackburn Derby. Hey, it is a Blackburn Derby, my mate Andy. Hey. Fourth into this group. Eighteen. Steve Broughton with Steve B. Army. Welcome aboard, Steve. And to finalise this group, we've got 27, which is Dan Cox. Oh! Dan Cox is in my group. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Dan. I was hoping for Sean Siddall, because uh, he did give me a bit, a bit, bit, of, a, bit of banter. He, only, he said he beat me home and away. He said, so, uh, I was hoping for Sean Siddall, but we'll see. We must meet in the final, Sean. Right, that's Group A finalised. Group B. Do you add know your numbers? Um, I'm 19, I think. No. Ben, you're 20. 20. 20 for you, Ben. Fergie? Uh, no, I don't. 23, mate. 23. And uh, James? I'm number 10, aren't I? Perfect you're 10. You're number 10, mate. Shalla's son of shirt number, so or was he 11? No. He's I'm 11. Manny, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Man <laughs> <is one. laughs> right, group B. Here we go. 19. That's uh, Mark Tavares. First out in group B. Second out in group B. With David Dunkley, number three. Third out, 20. Whee. Ben Lee, 
in group B. I wonder if we're all going to get in different different groups. <clears throat> Fourth out in that group with 26, which is Stephen Took. Next one out, 22, which is Dean Horton. That finalises group B. Let us know when you're ready, James. He's, he's, a, he's a Leicester up. fan. Oh, is he? Oh, hey, we've got a Leicester Derby. Yeah. Leicester Derby in Group B. We're we ready for Group C, James? Yep. First out, 14, Alex Newton and Suck My Cock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I say... Listen, I didn't write these team names. Although it was his oh. team name, I just thought you were making a general <laughs> statement, a general request. <laughs> uh, I thought your wife had walked in tone or something for a minute. <laughs> no, there's lots of cocks and balls in these team names, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> Alex Newton, you, uh, you're starting group C. <laughs> Uh, number 23 next up. That's you, Fergie. That's me. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> You're in Group C, mate. We suck my cock. Next up. the first time. The third team. <laughs> oh, <Ben's off. laughs> we said we'd keep this as professional as possible. Cheers. And we've gone. Right. Number six. Patrick Mark Bryson, you're in Group C. The fourth team into Group C. Number eight, Matt Woolley, top of the shot, number one. Ooh. It's, it's turning into a group of death. Um, but yeah, he's in there, Matt Woolley, Group C. Next up, finalising Group C, is 25. A one and only, uh, Lee Hooper. Lee Hooper, you're into the group of death, mate. If ever your luck, if ever your luck <laughs> is ever returned, it's not today. Oh, mate. dear. But oh, I can't wait to see how that goes. He's always, he, he, <laughs> that was always going to happen, wasn't it? it Lee was. in the group of death. It was, definitely. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, group, group D. Group D, who's opening this up? Number 17, Paul Young and the Young Guns. You're up there, mate. Group D. Next up, seven. What the deuce, Paul McNally in, uh, in Group D. How do you get? Again, number two, Connor Tobin, flying without Ings. You're in there, mate, in Group D. Not many left now. 13. Next up, 13. Our very own resident resident blogger, Connor. You're in Group D, mate. Um, is it? Do you know? We've all been kept apart so far. Hold on. Here we go. Next up, completing Group D. In number 11. Sean Sido with ball bags. You're in Group D, mate. We're ready to go, still, James. I'm not going too fast, am I, mate? No, mate. I'm 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 good at typing. <laughs> Happy days. Right, Group E. First up, number nine, Matty Matty Blake. Okay, first up in Group E, mate. Second up, number one, top of the shot, Ryan Fitzsimmons. Next up, number 12, is Mike White with his great team name, Fred West Ham. <laughs> is that Mike White, did you say? Mike White. Yeah. Fred, Fred West Ham. And next up, Frank FF Stuff. Oosh. He's there in he's in group E. 
Number 24. And finalising that group. Number 5. Ashley Ingram, the gold diggers. In group E. So one more group to draw. So this will be quick, pretty quick because they're all into this group. So first up, number 30. Which is Steve Chi. Our American friend. 21, which is Wayne Foster Crouch. Twenty-eight, which is Lee Uten with salt and pepper. Fifteen, which is John Melia. And the last person to be drawn. Number 10, James Ricker. Mm. And that concludes the draw for the DT Tonic Patreon Cup. Um, again, just reiterate on the on the rules, you've got six groups of five. So it's going to be the top two from each group on the head-to-head. -head. Um, three points for a win. Three points for a win. Obviously, goal difference, your points for, points against, will, will count in any, um, any draw points, but it's obviously... Um, if you're both at the top with nine points, you will be uh, separated by um, by your points difference. Then there'll be four four best third place teams that make it through to the last sixteen. Uh, the last sixteen will be drawn. Um, after that, um, it, it's not automatically going into like A versus B second. It doesn't do that. We're going to redraw it again. Um, the game weeks will be announced. Uh, obviously, it starts this week. The first round of the games is is um, starting from the 12th of March. Um, and further details to follow, I'll post it on the Patreon, post it on the Twitter as well, so everyone will have knowledge of where the games are coming up and who they're against. Uh, I'm also going to put people's Twitter handles on there, so if you, if you want to have a bit of banter, you want, if you want to censor abuse, <laughs> whatever, um, it's up to you. But yeah, hopefully it's a, a good laugh. And um, obviously, a bit, a bit of cash prize and a trophy at the end of it. So that's all from uh, the Tonic headquarters. The draw's done. Um, hope you all enjoy. Enjoy what's to come. <laughs> you can see the stress behind it all, but um, yeah, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, some good fun. Um, thanks, thanks, James, Ben, Fergie. Cheers for uh, joining us this week, as usual. Uh, it's my pleasure to have you all with me. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Cheers lads. Everyone. Thanks for having me on, Chaps. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Freddy. Appreciate you joining us. And uh, good luck for the rest of the week. And you. And best of luck in the cup. I've heard yeah. the, yeah. the draw has been uh, be, you know, interesting draw. <laughs> very interesting draw. It, a very interesting route to the final. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Let's get going. <laughs> right. Cheerio. See ya. See ya.